TCS AH-64D startup training. I'm Top Gun with the AKA War Dog Squadron. So I'm going to uh, open this up with, first of all, apologizing. It's been a while. Uh, this has been out for a good month or two at this point. So I'm kind of late to the party of getting this video made. Uh, the other thing is this is still very early access. Uh, the FCR is not in place yet. So I'm sure that there's going to be whole segments of the uh, cold start procedure that we're basically skipping over right now that we'll need to add at a later date so this is definitely this startup is definitely going to change as time goes on uh, the other thing that i want to note is that the process that i do i try to follow all of the mfd system uh, system and sus subsystem setups uh, prior to engine start uh, the engines, you know, starting up the engines themselves is really easy in this aircraft and takes almost no time at all. Uh, but going through you know, all of the MFDs and their menus and whatnot does take a bit of time. So rather than sitting on the pad and burning fuel that entire time, I just set those up first and then save the engine starts for actually near the uh, back end of the checklist. Uh, you can do it differently. Uh, shouldn't make any difference either way. I'm working off of my version, uh, my checklist version 1.3. Uh, <clears throat> I'll try and put that link in the description of the video. The items that you see in red text are items that are already set to the correct position for a cold start in a fresh aircraft. If you are in a existing aircraft and come in and shut down for repairs and whatnot and you need to start back up, then those are items that you will need to check on and go through uh, just in case any of those have changed while you were in flight. The other items, the blue items in the checklist are stand for the main menu keys on the MFDs. Mainly we're talking about things like the weapon, STDM, and AC buttons on both of the MFDs. And the green section on the checklist starts the basically that's the beginning of the process of the checklist where you're going through all the settings on the MFDs. If you want to go straight to the engine start, then basically go to the end of that section and then you can start doing the engine start and then you can switch back to the MFD setup later. But anyways, now that we got that out of the way, let's go ahead and close the canopy. Uh, if it's nighttime, you'll probably want your flashlight uh, to see some of the stuff to begin with. Uh, the default for that is left alt L is in Lima. And then from there, you can turn on like the cockpit floodlights if you need to. So let's set our parking brake. That's one of the items that's in red. It's already pulled out and ready to go. So let's turn on our master ignition to battery. And for right now, let's get the iHads out of the way. And our tail wheel, uh, make sure it's locked. Uh, it's already locked by default. You should see no light there. And emergency hydraulics verify on light is extinguished. Uh, again, that's already pretty much set by default with the fresh aircraft, so we don't need to worry about that. So let's go ahead and start the APU, pull up the cover. And this takes a second or two. And if you want uh, internal lighting at this point, you've got uh, your signal is already cranked up, but you've got your primary and standby instruments. And you've got your floods down here if it's like nighttime and you want some additional light. So there's your signal, it's already on. So primary, secondary. And it's daytime, we don't really need it, but I'm gonna go ahead and turn them on anyways. We got our brightness for KU panel and for our upfront controller and also for countermeasures panel make sure all of those are turned on enough that you can see them for the MFDs make sure you're in the right mode as far as day or nighttime and you can adjust the brightness and contrast on these as well So 
we want to do uh, contacting ATC, we need to go to our com, go to B2. So when you hear uh, terms for this aircraft, when you see when you hear like T1 through T6, R1 through R6, B1 through B6, and L1 through L6, they're talking about the buttons around the MFDs and it goes so from T1 to T6 you're talking T1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 and same thing goes for the rest of these so R1 through R6, B1 through B6 and B1 is actually the M key here basically and then L1 through L6. So if we're saying B2, we're talking manual, now we can go and change our frequency to whatever we want so for our uh, each of the radios that we have on board, FM1, FM2, UHF, and VHF. So that just shows you where you need to go to change those if you want them. So let's go ahead and get started with the MFDs. This is a little bit of a process, but you know, it's best to do this when you're on the ground so you're not having to screw this in flight. So let's go to our DTL, DTL load and INS alignment. So on the right MFD, go ahead and do a master load. And honestly, I don't know if this even does anything right now with early access being what it is. Uh, and then we'll just go to our TSD. Go top six to util. And this part is implemented right now. So you'll see that you've got a INS alignment right now. You've got two systems, INU one and two. And when these numbers turn green, it's done. So it's going to take, I believe, around four minutes for that to complete. So we'll leave this up for right now so we can keep an eye on it. So let's work off of the left MFD for most of this stuff. So we'll start off with our countermeasures. So we'll go to B1, which is the M key. Oops, we got to get out of our comms first. All right, so let's go to L3 for ASE. Top six for util, and R5 for uh, radar warding. I tend to do the terse voice. It just gets the attention a little bit better. And let's turn on the system. So RLWR, make sure that that circle is filled in. On the left-hand side, uh, we can change our uh, countermeasures if we want to. So for our chaff, like. I'll set, uh, set that to four instead of two. And let's go back to T6 to get out of this. So that's something that this menu, something you gotta be aware of for these menus is that you'll turn a menu on and as long as that's boxed, now you're in the sub menus for that. And you can't get out of it until you get out of that main mode or that main button uh, for, you know, make sure it's unboxed. Alright, and for auto search, this is going to be preference, so right now it's set to set to search. I tend to set it to track, but again, that one's kind of up to you. Alright, so let's get out of the ASC. So let's go and start working on map display settings. So we'll go back to our TSD. Do top three for show and bottom two for phase so there's two phases you got navigation and attack so right now we're in navigation so let's do top five for threats and I want everything just about show I want to see threats I want to see targets and I want to see the acquisitions let's go to T6 to show coordinates And again, I want to see, you know, enemy units, plan targets and threats, turn those on, and friendly units, we'll turn everything on. And for B2, for the attack, same thing there, make sure everything's visible. I'll we'll turn the show menu off. Now we're going over to R1, R2 for scale. So. We'll just set it for 25 miles. Just leave it at that. R3, you can set to either center on the display 
or down near the bottom. I'll just keep it near the bottom. And bottom five RTE for route. So let's go ahead and set our direct to waypoint one. It pretty much already was set, but this is how you do it. So if I wanted to go to waypoint two instead, we do route direct waypoint two. So let's turn the route off. And let's go to map. T5 for the grid. I actually like the grid, so we're gonna keep we're gonna leave that on. And right and five for orient, track up or heading up. I'm just gonna leave it for track up. I'm kinda used to that display. And left four for color band. I'm not even sure if this is even implemented yet, but I'm gonna I set mine to elevation. I haven't noticed it uh, thus far, but maybe I'm just not seeing things right. And left uh, two for type, uh, we can do digital or chart or the satellite. Not exactly a terribly, I mean, we pro it probably would show more detail if we zoom in a bit more, but. But we can leave it for there for now. And if you go too far in one direction or another, it'll actually turn that information off. So, again, instant, early, early access. So, let's go ahead and put it back to chart. All right, so time options. I really don't do much with this, but if you want to mess with it, uh, go to uh, top six. Let's go ahead and turn that off and that back off. So for time functions, we'll go to T6 for util. System time, uh, it's currently sitting there. The time currently in the computer is set to Zulu time by default. You can change it to local if you want. And if you need to change the actual time, you can click on system time and update it. So let's turn that back off. ADF setup. I'm not going to bother with it, but I'll show you where it's at. So left one. So instrumentation. We can get our uh, get our instrumentation displayed up on the map if we want it. And we can go to T6 util. And bottom six to ADF, so we can turn ADF on and we can set up uh, you know, frequencies for what we need there. I'm just going to turn that off because otherwise it's just going to be beeping at us and just drive me crazy. So let's go back to T6 and turn that back off. All right, so I hats. Now we need to bore sight. So now we need to turn our I hats back on. Let's zoom out a little bit. All right, so we need to hit our weapon button and left five for bore sight. And then left four to activate. And now we should have yellow dots on the system here. All right, so what we need to do is we need to put the cross on our IHADs. So this right here. And we need to look down. And if you've got, if you've got a track IR or something like that, you're going to need to kind of crane around until this looks like a dartboard, you know, like, like a bullseye. You're going to need to get down there, and then you're going to need to hit the bore sight, which is L5, I believe. Yes. All right. In order to complete that, so here all right so you want the left six button actually all right so get lined up and there we go once you've done that uh, it should those yellow circles should disappear. This is important. 
if you want the gun to be anywhere near accurate, you've got to get that pretty much spot on. If it, you know, if the if the yellow circles are not concentrically aligned, if it's off in one direction or another, then you know, so you know, obviously your gun's going to be off kilter as well. So, you know, take your time to get that going right. All right, so weapons configuration. So let's turn the eye heads back off for the moment. So go to our weapons and then our gun, V2. We can set uh, how many rounds per salvo. I'm just going to leave it at 10. And let's move on to our missile. And we've got our primary frequency, alternate frequency. And let's go ahead and we'll go ahead and do a change. So let's, let's set uh, our primary, let's set it to say channel Charlie. And we'll set our Bravo to channel A, let's say. And for the codes, you can see which codes are on what channels. You can change that as needed. And just keep in mind that if you're setting your missiles for a particular channel, you know, you'll probably want if you're if, if you're self-designating at least, you'll want to set both the LST and the LRFD. To the same channel so say for example where we're doing Charlie and then turn the code back off so now we've got everything so we got an LRFT set to Charlie now and our LST set to Charlie and the missiles are set for Charlie so everything is going to be looking at the same thing so obviously this is going to be different if, uh, if for example you're looking for a wingman's frequency instead of your own you know so if you're like buddy lazing that kind of thing so it's going to depend on the situation as far as what you need as far as setting this stuff all right uh, let's go ahead and move on to rockets so we'll set it to the explosive instead of the illumination and for quantity we can set it to just a single or you could set for two or whatever you want you know i just do typically like one or two i don't want to be terribly wasteful let's turn the rockets back off and acquisition go ahead and set that to gunners or we could set it to the tads so i'll set it to gunners for right now and altitude settings need to move on to the AC so top uh, top button to flight auto yeah, shutdown button. initiated auto shutdown canceled mic off mic on let's go to util all right so anti-ice while we're in here I'm skipping around a little bit but uh, Anti-ice system, we'll just set that to auto. So let's go back to flight and bottom six. And we'll set our high altitude and our low altitudes as needed. So if this is for uh, bot, uh, top one is for your high altitude. Uh, top three is for your low altitude. Uh, I'm just going to leave those as is. Uh, I know from this mission uh, what the pressure is, so I'll go ahead and set the barometer while we're in it. So we'll go ahead and box top six. We'll set two, nine, decimal four, nine. Enter. You see that that's changed, so now we got the right uh, barometric, barometric pressure set. Pressure can be set in uh, inches of mercury or uh, QFE. I'm uh, just leaving it in inches of mercury, of course. And if we want, we can also set the altitude for the uh, the altitude set for the airfield that we're at. Uh, so that's going to be top five here for alt. For 
bottom two, we can set our units in either nautical miles or kilometers. Uh, I'm just going to go ahead and leave it for kilometers at this point. And this is one that's important. Uh, it is set by default now. It wasn't earlier in early access, but uh, right six as radar altitude. That needs to that circle needs to be filled in. Uh, if it is uh, if it is not, that means radar, your radar altimeter is not currently on, and you will not be able to get auto ranging for your gun and rockets and things like that, uh, even if you are below 1,200 feet. So you need to make sure that that is turned on. So let's hit B6, bottom six, to turn off the set menu. We'll go to our fuel, so that is T3. And we can go to bottom six to check and have a warning. It's saying we'll, we'll set it for 20, uh, set it for 20 and leave it at that. I'll turn that back off. Weights and balance. Uh, I mean, it's, we can go to top four. I mean, the, the page is here. I don't know if it actually has any impact on the current aircraft performance, uh, but you can go to bottom six for weights to set weights for the pilot, co-pilot, uh, and things like that. Uh, I don't even mess with it, so we'll just turn that back off. <coughs> and go to top six for the util. Again, this is where we normally go for setting the anti-ice on and off. We've already done that. So let's go back to B1. And let's take a look at our engine page. You can see on the right MFD, the alignment is done. Everything's in green. So we'll go ahead and set uh, B2 on this one as well. Uh, we'll go ahead and and we'll set it to system. All right, so at this point, we're pretty much done now with the MFDs. I mean, all of these are not 100% critical to do right, you know, right now, but again, this is obviously a lot easier to do when on the ground. So I mean, you, can, you can move these segments of the checklist around as you need. So let's turn on our standby attitude indicator, un uh, unflag it. Uh, at this point, we'd contact ATC to get engine clearance start. And let's get our first uh, left engine going. Auto shutdown initiated. Auto shutdown canceled. Mic off, mic on. And then move the power lever up to idle. Temperatures get a good light. There we go. And we'll do the same with the other one. Get a crane around to see it. Both of the power levers into light. Everything looks 
good. Stabilize. Turn off master warning. Now that the engines are spun up, we can turn the APU off. Recover. hats back on swing over to our countermeasures put all three of these switches up and then also turn the system itself on go through its built-in test and if you're on an airfield at this point you can you know unlock the tailwheel or if you're just at a farp like I am you're just gonna be taken off vertically so this point if you wanted the tax you can also put the parking brake in to turn it off and at this point you are ready to go uh, contact ATC for takeoff clearance and you're all set uh, I know this has been pretty long compared to the most start videos and I was definitely kind of fumbling a little bit within the MFDs it is easy to get lost in these MFDs and their main menus and sub menus uh, so you just kind of be have to be methodical about it. I haven't touched the Apache for a little bit, so I was a little rusty. But uh, so you just have to keep at it. But once you get the the flow of it, it's not too bad. So you basically just you know start at the top left main menu, you know, and you're basically activating that and going through all the sub menus and then deactivating it, and moving on to the next. So you're kind of working around the MFDs in a clockwise fashion. So. But if you have any questions, comments, concerns, let me know. Hope this has been helpful. Thank you.